Okay, so let's have a look at the box. It's a special video looking at the uh, Broncos 135th scale M1224 Max Pro MRAP. Quite a mouthful. And this video is in conjunction with Abrams Squad magazine. Please check out Pla Productions website for a link there also to have a look at this great magazine that I do editing for. Uh, that's Perry's magazine. But anyways, let's have a look at this kit. Uh, here's the box. It is slightly battered. Okay, let's have a look at what's on the side. Uh, there's some renditions of the model there that are uh, built up. It says it's got high quality decal. It has photo etched parts. There's a kit number on there. This kit is a little bit expensive from what I've seen retailed. On this side, we've got a... Uh, yeah, the scheme, I think that's, you can see this is actually the Czech version there. I mean, basically, it's a sand-coloured vehicle. There's nothing on the back. Let's open this up. What we have inside is one big instruction book, which we're going to have a look at in detail. Hero parts, which are very limited, by the way. This is uh, really unusual. It's extremely flexible. It's the front grille or the front mount. The decal sheet and the photo etch. Note this. This is the slats for the window protection. Not that much photo etch, really. Have a look at these bags. We'll open up the bags separately. Let's just have a look at them quickly. One, two, three transparencies. Oh, five. Oh my gosh. There's a lot inside here. There's loads. Okay, let's open that up and have a look at the sprues individually. Go through the instruction sheet and I'm going to give you my opinions on this kit. So we're going to start off looking at the instructions. It's in a booklet. There's a bit of history on that. You can read about that stuff in your own time. Basically, this is a V-shaped hull vehicle, mine resistant. Sort of developed in the, um, the recent conflicts Iraq, Afghanistan, where uh, conventional vehicles were not mine protected, so they had to develop uh, these V-shaped hull vehicles to deal with the uh, insurgents and uh, IED threat. Right in the back is the decal and colour guide. You get four options. Um, they actually have them referenced. The first one is in uh, Grafenwar in Germany. Just move that over so you can have a proper look at that. Notice all of them are this desert camo, so you haven't got a, uh, a NATO camo on any of them. Um, Czech Army Afghanistan 2012. Czech Army Afghanistan 2012. And US Base Lewis McCord Washington 2010. I don't know if there's any differences between the vehicles. Maybe that will be become apparent in the uh, instructions. This one's probably the most attractive scheme because it has this interesting decal in the back saying something in Czech language. Anybody from Czechoslovakia who's watching this, maybe you can translate. I'll just zoom into that so you can just see that. Looks kind of cool, looks kind of interesting. It's quite a big booklet to go through, quite a lot to look at inside here. I've already had a flick through. First thing we start off with is the sprue map, and there are so many components here. Uh, I don't know how many parts there are, but I would guess over a thousand easily. You can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. 2021, 22, 23, 24, 25, 27. Oh, at least over 30 sprues, transparencies, the photo etch, and the decal sheet. There's no use part call out there, but uh, every single part seems to be used. The call outs for the colors are in references to the name of the color, hobby color. Mr. Hobby, so there's two of them that's aqueous, and that's the lacquer, Mr. Hobby. Humbrol. Basically, all the references are missing. To my, uh, a few of the references are missing. Don't worry, all these colours are easily obtainable in whatever your preference is. 
Okay, so straight away we've got a traditional ladder rack um, construction of the chassis and right from the offset we've got extreme detail. Uh, you're going to find, I've already checked this out and there's nothing simplified whatsoever. Um, there's a mass amount of detail, lots and lots of very small intricate photo etch parts etc. And uh, you're building up the chassis there. You're going to see what sort of difficulties you might run into. The engine gets dropped in at this stage here. There's a full engine. More details going on under the underneath the chassis. The suspension gets built up in this stage by 14. More chassis work. Lots and lots of detail. Here we get the, uh, uh, the transmission running gear getting fit, fitted on in this stage. I'm going to point out something at this stage. Well, I'm just going to flick back. You're going to see it in the parts as well. And, uh, okay, don't really want to gripe, but basically you're going to find, like here's a great example. You see these two parts? They're split in half. Why? Just to get, is it going to get any really extra detail that you can see? Probably not. Stuff like this ends up being painful, believe me. So the transmission shaft is, is a half split. You've got a seam to deal with if you're really bothered. But why make it so complex? This could be one part, certainly in, in Trumpeteer, for what it is. And again, as well, here you see the steering mechanism. mechanism. That ball joint is split in half again. There's a lot of fiddly stuff that's really could be, it could be simplified a little bit. You have to admire Bronco for their care in all the detail, but some of it looks really excessive, to be honest. Okay, so we're moving over. We're starting to build up some of the components and you can't really work out what this is. And believe me, fit is going to be absolutely crucial here. And uh, immediately I can say that you, you need to be a bit, you're going to have to have a few kits underneath your belt. You're going to have to be experienced on this. Um, you can see here that bolt detail is on one of the sprues and you have to shave it off and cement it on place to get this detail, probably can't even be seen, but it's there. They've got it all captured, every little bolt for you. Now there's that part, it's made of multiple components. It's the underneath, um, I don't know what that is, underneath the cab possibly. Really can't work it out. Now there's more and more parts getting built up. There's a radiator, there's a side bit going on. You can sort of see how complex this is going to be. It's not as simple as build the chassis, build the body, stick the... It's, it's just not like that. Now you come onto the part where you're doing the interior. The interior is fully detailed, fully kitted out. Have a look at this point here. Here's the seats. On these mine-resistant vehicles, the seats hang from the roof of the vehicle um, to prevent a shock load getting uh, transmitted to the personnel on the back. So there's extra... So they're actually suspended from the roof and they're um, isolated from a blast. Okay, so now we're on page 43. We're building up the uh, side of the body. Here's these PE grills going on. Of course, you can see what the problem is. Here's the armored glass. Then the, then the, uh, the photo etch is going on. Of course, you're not going to do it. The photo etch is going to go on the very last thing because you need to mask all this off. You need to paint it, then this needs to be painted, and then go on, but um, I'm sure you guys know all that. Admirable that they represent it. You do need that represented, that slotted um, armour there. Um, some really nice touches here. This is the casualty um, uh, spine casualty stretcher. So um, that's fixed on there. Of course, it's another detail you can add on later on. Uh, there we go, this is the, basically the body coming together, so all this detail inside here, the seats, the two halves going across, and then the driver's section. So alignment's going to be absolutely crucial here. It's just, it's not simplified, there's so much detail going in, even on the roof. Here's the multi-layer uh, armoured glass getting built up. Um, when we look at the parts, uh, I have to remind myself to check out. I'm not too sure if the glass would be tinted or otherwise it is clear on this model. Right. 
just make sure I haven't missed anything. No, that's all going together now. Now this is the crucial stage, 62. So not until 62 steps later are you going to know if this is going to fit onto this. And um, the sequence here, this is a road to problems, believe me. You need to be working at both parts at the same time to make sure you've got alignment. And the further difficulty is this part, which is the hood or bonnet. That's made out of multiple components. There's that one strange flexible part that was um, attached to that card. All this needs to be aligned or it's gonna look absolutely terrible. You're gonna have gaps all over the place. So you have to be cautious. Uh, excellent detail here on the steps, on the rear entrance, etc. with photo etch um, steps and bits and pieces here. All the water carriers on the back. More details going on. It gives you the option, of course, in, or you're gonna show off the detail on the inside, I think. Uh, this is what this is made for. You've got the weapon set, you've got um, 7.62 MGs, the 50 cal. This is the gunner's upper turret. You've got an optional part, you can use the 7.62 MG or the HMG. So you've got an option there and there's also a side mounted uh, 7.62 MG there. And there we go, there's the final part. Um, other points to note, this is, um, I think it's called Duke, IED, so it's um, detection devices for um, anti-IED electronics measures, and there, there she is finished, it looks a really, straight away it looks a really fantastic detailed model, there are so many parts that I thought to actually just like break them down and just give you a few examples, and um, this is just one sprue, it doesn't matter if I'm going to call out, you can sort of see the engine detail being built there. Look at the mass of small components, small fiddly build. It's going to be a challenge, there's no doubt about it. But again, if you, you know, sometimes you, you get a flavour for building these, these type of models that have got this extreme detail. And... Um, one thing that I thought immediately with this kit is it sort of lends itself to actually maybe be in a vehicle that's damaged by a mine because it's got all that detail on there. It might be, uh, it might be possible to pose it as a vehicle that has hit a mine and it's been damaged. And you can show off all the interior or something. It's a possibility. Just note here, you can see the, um, the uh, seats there. It's got molded on. Um, shoulder harnesses, nothing really wrong with that. You can scrape them off, you can build your own. Um, they're not in P. I prefer them like that to be honest for, for what they are. There's a steering wheel there. Here's the roof and the side walls. There's that radiator, really nicely detailed, slatted um, front grille. These uh, components here look really good, the side walls on the roof and they are really thin as well thin um okay i need to check the instructions you can see a lot of um injector pin marks all over the shop there i don't know <laughs> uh hmm. yeah i'm unsure what the hell to do about that but if you need to cover them all up that is going to be an absolute bloody nightmare to be honest maybe maybe they're deliberate maybe that's how it looks inside i'm not too sure they don't, I'm not too quite sure if they're, if they're pin marks or maybe not. Right, this shows you the V-hole there. Again, one piece and another piece there. There's the detail of the bonnet, cab, um, side panels. Look at that louver there, you can actually see through it, isn't that wonderful? Really nice detail throughout on this kit. Question is, how does it go together? Here's the side as well. So this is, maybe it's scale thickness. You see there's the door openings and we saw the, look at those components there. They've actually got a sandwich construction probably for the walls there. There's the doors there, they've got loads of um, pin marks all over them, they need to be cleaned up. 
There's a stack of um, parts for detailing, like the water carriers. Loads and loads of suspension parts. Here are the tyres. The rubber, they have no markings on the sidewalls. But, um, oh no, they do. They do actually. They actually do. It's difficult to sort of get them in there. They look really good actually. I'm going to use them straight away. As long as they've got a nice tight fit to the rims, look pretty good. Could go through all the sprues, but it's not really necessary to be honest. Okay, here is the uh, glazing parts. You get two off because they sandwich together to create that uh, layered thickness. And as I said, they're perfectly clear. Are they meant to be? I've got no idea, to be honest, if they're meant to be clear or they're meant to be uh, like a spoked glass. So maybe somebody else can tell me about that. Just have a quick look at the photo etch. There's those really nice louvered protection for the glazing. Loads and loads of little tiny little PE parts. Decal sheet is a decal sheet. No big deal there. Hope you enjoyed the review. We will build this one eventually as well, but we have got the grumble to proceed on. So leave your comments and uh, maybe you can feedback on this one.